We'll start with first ionization energy. And the first ionization energy of an element is the energy required to remove one electron from each atom in one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous one plus ions. Let's have a look at what this looks like in form of an equation. If we have one mole of gaseous sodium atoms, and the gaseous is important here, they must be in a gaseous state, even though we would think of sodium at normal temperatures as being solid, for ionization energies, they need to be gaseous, so all the atoms need to be gaseous. So one mole of gaseous sodium atoms will go to one mole of gaseous one plus sodium ions. So the gaseous atoms will be changed to one mole of one plus sodium ions. And we will remove one mole of electrons. And the energy to actually do this, to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous sodium atoms, will be plus 496 kilojoules per mole. So that's 496 kilojoules for every mole of sodium atoms. If we look at a sodium atom and the outermost electron, this electron is the easiest one to remove because it is the one that experiences the weakest attraction from the positive nucleus. There's an attraction between the electrons and the nucleus because the electrons are negatively charged and the nucleus is positively charged. And the one on the outermost is the one that experiences the weakest amount of attraction from the nucleus. So what we do when we ionize the gaseous sodium atom is apply enough energy to remove this electron. The energy we apply must overcome the attractive force that the electron experiences from the nucleus. We're then left with a positively charged ion, sodium ion, a singly positively charged sodium ion. We'll look at the factors affecting ionization energy. Now there are just three factors that affect ionization energy. Now these are really important to learn because they will help you tremendously with other things in AS chemistry. So there are only three factors and make sure you know and understand them. And the first one is atomic radius. The next one is nuclear charge. And the final one is electron shielding or screening. Let's first look at atomic radius and if we can compare lithium with sodium. Now atomic radius is the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost electron. We can see here the atomic radius for lithium is less than the atomic radius for sodium. The force of attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electron for lithium is greater than that of sodium because it is closer to the nucleus. The outermost electron from sodium requires less energy to remove it since it is further away from the nucleus. The greater the distance from the nucleus, the less energy it takes to remove it. Nuclear charge is a measure of how many protons there are in a nucleus. The greater the number of protons, the greater the nuclear charge. If we compare lithium at one end of period 2 in the periodic table with neon at the other end, we see that with neon with 10 protons, has a greater nuclear charge than lithium has with only three protons. The greater the nuclear charge, the greater the force of attraction between the electrons and the nucleus. This is why the atomic radius becomes smaller as you go horizontally across a period in the periodic table. 
increased nuclear charge increases the first ionization energy. Electron screening or shielding is an effect where the electrons from the inner shells repel outer ones and thereby weaken the force of attraction between the nucleus and the outer electrons. If we compare lithium with sodium, the outermost electron in sodium has ten inner electrons shielding the nucleus, whereas with lithium there is only two. Therefore, the shielding effect for the outer electron of sodium is greater than the outer electron of lithium. Greater shielding results in a lower first ionization energy, since the attraction between the nucleus and the outer electrons is weakened.